everyone. Welcome to another Digital Photo Mentor live photo editing demonstration. As you can see by the image on my, I guess it would be my right, <laughs> uh, we're going to be doing forest images today. And we got a ton of great images submitted this week. Wow, thanks you guys. Um, I'm going to have a hard time selecting. So that's a good problem to have. Um, if your images were sent in and your image doesn't get selected for editing tonight, I may hold on to it for a future and do another version of Forest because this seemed to be a popular one. So thanks for sending your images if you've sent in your images. And if you are new here to the channel and to the photo editing live stream, tell us in the chat, which you should find over on the side, where you're joining from. And if it's your first time, welcome. Let us know that. And how did you find out about this live? We're going to be looking at the forest images and I'm going to demonstrate using photo editing using Lightroom and Luminar based on what the person who submitted the image prefers to be used for their editing software. So I'd like to demonstrate so that you get the maximum benefit. If you don't use either of those programs or if I'm demonstrating with one and you use the other one, there's still lots to be learned because I'm going to be talking about why I edit certain things and what I'm doing to make it better. And then you can use that information in your own photo editing workflow. So I'm going to take a quick peek and then see who is here. Lots of regulars already here. I see Holly. I see Deb from Alaska. I see Mickey, Stephanie. Uh, I see Ray. And I know that Neil is here. Manfred, David in Ontario talking about who's got hot temperatures. Marguerite, Vivian. Awesome. So lots of regulars today. If I missed you, my apologies. Um, we've got sort of a full house already today. So that's awesome. Uh, we've talked briefly about topics for the next two weeks and I'll come back to these again, but start thinking about water. Okay. And I've got a couple that got submitted this week that I actually put into that category. Um, I may move one that's a waterfall as well because I've got too many forest images. Um, that's your image, Stephanie, the waterfall. So I may move that one to next week. We're going to be doing water and we're going to do abstract. So I'm going to tag Anne Ambro when I publish this one because that is right up her alley. So start thinking about your abstracts. Um, some of the ones that you sent, Neil, which were uh, intentional camera movement, and I think Danelle sent one as well, could go into the abstract category. So I'm going to hold on to that. Rob says he would like a definition of an abstract photo. So an abstract photo would be something that captures the scene in a different way than reality. So it could be in-camera movement. Um, you could have done something um, to it during the exposure, like zoom the lens, move the camera, or it could just be photographed it in a certain way that makes it look abstract, such as photographing a reflection um, in the water without actually photographing the actual thing, or maybe it's just a shadow of something without the actual subject. So for me, an abstract is something that is thinking outside the box, captured in a way that maybe you can't tell what the original subject is, okay? So does that help? Holly says, testing, testing. <laughs> so experimenting, yes, exactly. So I'm going to hop over here um, and let me take that off the screen and let me take my secondary thing off the screen. Okay, how's that? Um, do you prefer me to do it this way? I think this is a better layout than this way because the screen is bigger. So I'm gonna go with this one and keep the string screen bigger. Okay. Uh, is it working now, Holly? I, I had the chat actually stop working for me a couple of weeks um, ago. And yes, I do have a new shirt and we're working on, on branding of things. Okay. I did not remove your privilege, Holly. No, I see your, I see your chat messages just fine. Uh, so they are coming through. So I've got a lot of images from people that are already here. So I want to make sure that uh, I can edit your image while you're here. Um, I've got several from Danelle. She probably wins for submitting the most images. Um, these are all of Danelle's and I put 
uh, a couple more of yours into another category already. I know you said you sent some extras. So I would say that this one here, if I crop this in, this could actually become an abstract. Um, and then there was another one that could be considered an abstract. Oh, here's another one of Danelle's. For some reason, they got sorted out incorrectly. Uh, let me go to the collection. There we go. All right, now I got them sorted correctly. Okay, so this one could also be considered or made into an abstract as well. So I may move some of these around still. Okay, so Danelle sent the most images. So I think I want to start with one of hers. And I just want to show a uh, vote, I guess, because <clears throat> there's a couple of really nice images here. <coughs> and she wants them done in Lightroom. So current vote on the screen. Would you prefer to see the left image, the, the vertical one? Or would you like to see the right image, the horizontal one with the bridge? They're kind of similar in a way. Um, they both got some nice leading lines, and I can work with that. They've both got um, an element of uh, humanity, shall we say. One has the path and one has the bridge. Um, so let's see. I'm getting bridge, right, 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 bridge, bridge, bridge. Everybody likes the bridge. Okay, that's interesting. Um Hey, friend, first time here. Awesome. And I do have your images as well. I got those received. So welcome. Thanks for coming, friend. Okay, so looks like it's mostly um, it's it, it's a it's a what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> it's a it's a landslide for the bridge. Um, can I do the bridge image and Adobe bridge? Uh, no, <laughs> but very funny, David. Full points for humor. Okay, so what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to take this one and edit the bridge because that seems to be the consensus. And then I'm going to copy the settings and apply it to the other one and see if they will actually um, work. All right, so now that I'm in here, I'm going to start with the usual, which is changing the color profile. And this is a Canon file. So if I put the info up here on the screen. I don't know if you can see it or not. It's kind of hidden behind the, um, if I darken it, there you can see it. So it is taken with, oops, don't see the camera. Uh, Canon camera though, it's a CR3 file. Lens is 24 to 105 shot at 24, F13 for one eighth of a second. So I have a question for you about that, Danelle. If you were shooting at F13, I understand you want to get a lot of depth of field, but at one eighth of a second, were you using a tripod? And if so, why did you use ISO 1600? So I'm guessing maybe not use the tripod um, and you're trying to get lots in focus here and it looks sharp. So my guess is you did use a tripod, um, in which case I would have used a lower ISO. Okay, so using ISO 1600 is going to give you some noise, which which we can deal with. Okay, handheld. Okay, that's impressive then at one eighth of a second. So I see why you did 1600 ISO. In hindsight, I probably would have recommended um, maybe lowering the aperture a little bit because you are shooting handheld because you may have run into some movement because of the, the shutter speed, but Good job, right? Good job keeping this sharp, first of all. Okay, so I'm going to change the camera profile. And most likely, I'm going to go with landscape because look what happens with the greens, right? It punches the greens up. I'm not crazy about that tone of green, right? But I can dial that in with the white balance and adjust it a little bit. Actually, portrait looks nice too. I'm going to go with the camera landscape though, okay? Now I'm going to work with the white balance. And I'm going to just choose one of the presets, okay? So this is the advantage of shooting a raw file. You have the white balance presets. I'm gonna go with cloudy because it's going to give me more yellow in the image. You see how it shifted this temperature slider more it higher, so it gave me more yellow, right? So the difference between the original and the shifted white balance gives you more yellow tint and it, um, it takes away from that sort of neon looking green, okay? 
Next, I'm gonna look at the exposure and I can see that there's definitely some areas clipping. So if I press J on the keyboard, remember you if you want the Lightroom keyboard shortcuts, uh, this is one here. If you could please share a link, <laughs> it's clipping. Uh, please share a link to the Lightroom keyboard shortcuts, Rob, for people that do not have this one already. And I'm going to head back here. Okay, so J on your keyboard will show the clipping warnings. You can also click these up here in the histogram. Okay? Make sure you're looking at the histogram. So I can see that the background and the sky is clipping. But if I bring the highlights down here, and I can do that by pressing the Alt Option key. Okay, so if I hold the Alt Option key and press the slider at the same time, it will show you the clipping warnings differently so you'll see them as white okay so i can just dial that down a tiny little bit and it takes care of that okay the benefit of that is it gives me a little more color in that upper area but i don't want to do it overall too far because what happens is the rest of the image starts looking flat okay so i'm only going to go part way oops i'm on the wrong screen i'm only going to go part way like so okay so i've got that taken care of then I'm actually going to bring the whites up again, which brings the clipping back, but that's okay, because I want to make sure that the overall scene and the part that's down here has good contrast, okay? <clears throat> um, let's see. Did also she took three exposures if you wanted to do HDR or needed the increased dynamic range. I would say for this one, I wouldn't worry about it. If you wanted to get more of the sky, then yes, you, you would want to do the bracketing. But the, the part of the, the scene that is most interesting is in the shade, and it doesn't need a lot of contrast. Right? You don't need that um, dynamic range. The next thing I want to do is adjust this bottom part or correct this part here because the white part is super bright, but I want to crop it a little bit as well, okay? Because there's a couple of things to think about. This tree here really grabs my attention, okay? My eye goes across the bridge and literally stops on this tree. And then there's all this stuff over here and it's kind of busy, okay? So I'm going to crop it and I'm going to keep the aspect ratio. So you can either click on this little lock icon or you can just hold the shift key, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to come in to the edge of this tree here. Okay? So I don't want all this stuff over here. And that gets rid of a lot of the white parts as well. Okay, So let's see how that works. Okay, So now I'm focused in more on this area and less up here. As a matter of fact, I want to see if we go even farther into this tree, what happens. I'm going to go a little bit further so I get rid of that little white spot on the corner. So I'm always watching the corners of the images. Okay, so see if I go back out again, there's that little white corner, the little bright corner. I want to have something dark on the corner. Okay, so now I've, I've taken care of most of that uh, issue, right? And a lot of the stuff that's interesting is actually down here. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick mask. And I'm just going to do a radial gradient, maybe a linear gradient. I'm going to do a linear gradient on this corner here. Okay, because I want to get this highlights. And then I'm going to add to it a radial gradient. So I just want to get this area. Okay, I'm not so worried about feathering. I just want to get this bright spot and this bright spot and make sure that I'm, I'm covering it. Then I'm going to dial the highlights way down. Okay, so can you see what's happening? Is I'm not affecting the whole image now, just those areas. Okay, I can darken the whole thing a little bit, but be careful of doing that because I've got this part selected and the tree starts to get dark. Okay, so I can bring the shadows back up. Something like that. Okay, can you see what that's doing? Watch those two areas. See that? When I add a vignette, that's going to help also. Okay? I'm going to use a preset to apply the medium vignette. Okay? And now you can see what happens. Now the whole image is a little bit dark and it's reflected in the histogram as well. So I'm going to brighten the whole image. Now look what's happening. It's coming to life and there's actually a waterfall underneath there. 
Okay, so now I'm going to bring the highlights up again okay, until I get some clipping, which is the, in that waterfall here. Or I could do shift, double click on the whites and shift, double click on the blacks. I want a bit more black clipping. I'm going to add a little bit of clarity. Okay, and now I find that it's really, really green. So I might want to add a little bit of magenta or shift the color just a little bit again. There's a lot of green. Okay. I'm still not decided on this cropping. I want to have a little bit more on top. Maybe something like that. That's starting to feel balanced. Can you see how I'm playing with the cropping a little bit? There's the there's the thing in the upper left corner, this tree up here, and then there's a tree down here. So they kind of balance each other, and the bridge coming across the middle keeps our eye into this area. Okay, but my eye still isn't going there as much as it's going to the outside of the image. Okay, so I'm going to use another mask, and I'm going to do a radial gradient over the center of the image, okay? And I'm gonna do this twice. So the first one I'm gonna do on the inside and I'm gonna change the mask color to red so I can see it a little better, okay? When you have a green mask on a green subject, it's harder to see. So I'm gonna use a red mask. Now that I've got the area that I want to affect selected, I'm just gonna brighten this whole thing, okay? I'm gonna bring the highlights up. I'm gonna bring the shadows up. something like that maybe even give it a bit more texture and clarity then i'm going to do the opposite to the outside of this area so i'm going to duplicate and invert it so now i'm working on the outside okay now i want to bring the highlights down even more as well as the exposure and the blacks Then I can go back and refine as needed. Okay, so if I've gone too far with this one, I can just scale it back a little bit. If I haven't gone far enough with this one, and I would ideally rename these also. Okay. Like so. Now we're starting to get somewhere. I'm still not crazy about how this one is sort of playing out. I might move the circle a little bit. Let's try that. And then I'm going to move this circle as well. There we go. So it's more in this area that I'm looking at. Okay, so I'm going to rename this one. I'm actually going to call it subject. And then we're going to call this one background. Okay, so I'm going to move the masks out of the way for a moment. Oops, where did they go? Where did they go? Oh, there it is. <laughs> it locked itself. Okay, so if I turn the masks off and on, okay, you can see that it's really starting to focus in on this area, okay? And I may have just gone a little too far. Okay, something like that. Okay, so the whole idea, there's the beginning. And where I'm at now, the whole idea is to get the eye of this viewer to come to the subject. But you need to know what where you want them to go. Okay? I know I don't want the eye up here. I want it down here somewhere. Okay? So I'm kind of this play between this neat little waterfall and this neat little bridge. I might move these around again even more. Maybe I'll rotate this one so it's more like that. Okay? So I'm playing around with this selection of the subject. And I might even make this one a little bigger. So I'll do something like that. Okay, so they don't have to be equal. Okay, now this one, um, I might even tend to pull this into Luminar to have a bit more of a glow or because this bright corner up here in the left is still really, 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 really bright, like it's not clipping, but it still takes a lot of att attention, right? So I can work with that a little bit more. 
Um, I might want to lower the dehaze, which tends to lower the contrast, lower the texture, and then I can come back and darken again. Okay. That really helps this one here. We can also lower texture even more. So texture, see how crunchy it is? Bringing the texture down helps to kind of make it look a bit blurrier. That's better, I think. But I want to pull this one into Luminar. So I'm just going to do edit in Luminar Neo because I want to add a sun rays. I've got the idea of adding a sun rays here. So make sure edit a copy. Now I would normally go to Photoshop first, but I, I want to just do kind of the one thing um, and then come back here. Uh, let's see, what's the questions? Um, next time if you've done, uh, if you have done a bracketed set, what you could do is zip them and I'll change the form so that you can include a zip file. So you could put them in as one submission. So yes, yeah, send all three, please. If you have a small area that's blown out, you go to channels to fix clipping. You can do that as well. Um, yeah, that's a little bit more involved, a lot more work for sure. Spot was the only way to get to the bridge due to the two trees on both sides. I hear you. Yeah, the composition is balanced. Like I, it does work for me for sure. You appreciate watching my thought process. Well, that's the whole idea. <laughs> so I'm glad. Okay. All right. So now it's open in Luminar on the other screen. So let me drag it over here. And I had a couple of things in mind here. Okay. So I want to go to my color harmony tool because I know that I'll be able to add contrast into the greens this way. Okay, so if I go more green, see what that's doing? It's picking up the green. We can also shift the color using this slider or make it cooler. Okay. And I can also shift the highlights or the shadows. So if I think, well, the highlights are too yellow, I can lower them a little bit. Okay, so there's lots of different things you can do with this tool, but I wanted to see what I could do with this picking up a little bit of contrast here. And we can look at the landscape tool, but landscape I find goes a little bit crazy with the green. So we can make golden hour and then foliage enhancer, always dial this one down to about minus 30. And I've told the developers this. Um, so I've told them, you know, bring this, shift the, the default more over here. Because if you're dealing with foliage, you don't want it to be this, that's neon, okay? So there's the neon puke, right? We don't want neon puke. So keep it a little bit more subtle. That's doing a nice job. I don't wanna punch it up too much because the color goes really crazy, especially with greens. But I specifically had sun rays in mind here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is drag this up and then place the sun over in this bright corner. So the sun is coming from here because it would make sense, right? Why this corner is the brightest. And then if I can position it in such a way, we can minimize some of those issues with these bright, with this bright corner. So I'm gonna do something like that and warm it up. So I like to have the rays warmer, the sun warmer. And then I just like to do randomize, okay? So randomize, I'm also gonna do darken this look. Randomize is just kind of, it rotates the sun, right? We could increase the length of the rays as well. Like so, we could have fewer rays. That's a little too much. I like the idea of it sort of coming through here like that, right? Let's see. 
See how smart it is? It knows that it's coming through trees like this. Right? If I put it here, the sun rays go up and not down. So that's also kind of interesting. Kind of like that. Okay, so see what it's doing, right? It's kind of masking that yellow or that highlight in the corner. It does take your attention, but now that we've got the sun rays, the sun rays lead us back into the image, right? So I'm going to dial that back just a little bit. I really love this overall look slider. I tend to use it and go to the dark side, which gives us more contrast, like so. And I'm going to use mystical to finish it off. A little bit of mystical. I'm going to dial the saturation down just a little bit. You can also play with a mood. I'm going to just play with, where is the sepia one? Sepia, because it gives us this brown tone just at an ever so slightly low amount. Okay. I'm at about 12, 14. It just takes it away from having that neon green and giving it a different look. Something like that. So how do we like the Luminar edit? Yes, thumbs up. All right, I'm going to apply it. Danelle says, brilliant solution to use sun rays. I always look for the easy solution to fix complex problems, if that makes sense. <laughs> so um, I love sun rays for stuff like this. I think it works really well on this image. Rob, did you have a question? I think he's hovering outside my door or else the cat is coming in. And sepia made the bridge stand out, Danelle says as well. So yeah, it brought out a bit more of the brown, right? Um, I'll use that sepia mood um, toner a lot, actually that lot, just as like um, a faded out kind of effect. Okay, let's do the next one. So I kind of did Lightroom and Luminar on that one, which is great. Uh, let's see who else is here. I know Stephanie's here. You've got the waterfall, Vivian, um, Trish is here, right? Because Trish has a really neat image and I might do the same again. And Brandon has a really cool image too. So this one, I want to know more about this image, Trish, because it looks like you're, it looks like you're looking down on the forest, which is a really unique perspective, right? Um, and since this is your image, Trish, would you prefer it to be done in, Lightroom or Luminar, or do you want me to show combination like I just did? So I can do the basic edits in Lightroom, and then we can go to Luminar if you like. Danelle's in vacation mode. <laughs> well, head out to the forest again. Um, let's see. Kelly said combo's fine. Okay, awesome. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a combo for Trish. So I'm going to start in Lightroom again, right? And tell me, was it looking down? Like, do you, are, are you using a drone here? Or how did you, tell us how you got this photo. Because I know this is really typical, like a typical New Zealand scene with these ferns. Because um, I love the big giant ferns. Love them. Okay, so first thing I want to look at is, like, our camera exposure is absolutely bang on uh 20 mil lens and it's an raf so I, that should be a um fuji file yeah fuji xt2 okay and 125th f64 okay so fuji so it's a fuji so it's not a drone you got me puzzling trish a forest with a bridge walk so you're over top of the forest oh that is really cool that's very cool Somebody with height issues might have an issue. So your exposure is absolutely bang on here, right? I don't see anything clipping, nothing. So let's take a look here. Now we don't have a landscape setting for um, Fuji, but I tend to like either Astia 
or Provia. Those are my go-tos. And in this case, I kind of like Provia, right? But let's take a look at some of the other options here in Lightroom. These are built in. I kind of like some of the modern ones. Like, let's just see what they do because you can also dial them down a little bit, right? So that kind of gives a neat faded out look. Right? That one's cool. I do like modern number seven. Look at that. I do like modern number seven. It does some nice things to the greens, right? It kind of separates the greens a little bit, right? And that's the thing about um, when you're photographing a forest like this, you want to show that there's more than just one tone of green, right? So I'm going to go with modern. Now, when you choose one other than the camera profile, you actually get a slider. So you can dial it back or even increase it. So I don't even mind increasing it just a little bit. So let's do that. So just out of the gate, just the camera profile, we've already got more color. Okay. Um, was there a question somewhere from Kelly about a raw file? Because I see people answering about questions. Um, let's see. Okay. Ke Kelly says, do you find raw files duller than other brands? Um, Canon raw files. I need, I know I need to edit, etc. I just find them duller than others. No, it's not just you, Kelly. Um, I used to shoot Canon and now that I shoot Fuji, the Canon raw files definitely are duller. So no, it's not just you. <laughs> okay. So, um, sadly, yes, but try playing with some of these other profiles that come with Lightroom. Okay. If you're working with Lightroom. Okay. You can also use LUTs and things. So it's not the end of the world. Okay. But you're, it's not just you, you're not crazy. Right. So now I'm going to do my shift double click on the blacks and the whites. Now it looks like it went the opposite direction on both of these. So I'm actually going to override these and make sure I have some more clipping. I'm going to add some clarity. Okay. Now, even though I've got a little bit of clipping, it's this, this stick right here and this stick right here. I'm not going to worry about that because I'm going to add some edge vignettes anyways, okay? Because I want to bring attention to this giant fern here, okay? So I'm going to do an edge vignette <coughs> using my Lightroom preset. And all that that does is applies these settings here, okay? So it's just a preset that I created for myself, okay? And you can see that it's just a vignette with this range, okay? I might actually make the shape and make it a little smaller. So make it rounder and a little smaller and then maybe not quite so dark. Like so. Okay, so you can see what that's doing. And it solved most of those problems with the clipping. So let's go back here. See, now I've got nothing clipping. So I'm holding the Alt Option key when I'm doing this. Okay. So there's no clipping on the whites now. In fact, I might take it a little bit higher now. Okay. See that? Now I don't need to bring the highlights down. So make sure that you do any vignetting. If your clippings are on the edges, keep that in mind when you're doing that. Okay. Now I want to add some contrast and punch here, but I only want to add it to the part that I want to be the subject. Okay. So if I use the contrast slider, that's overall. Okay. You see what that does? See how, remember, when we have more black, you get more color? Wow, look at that. Look at that, hey? Look at the contrast. Okay, so we can use the contrast slider, right? Or we can add more black and white this way. Okay? Or we can use a tone curve. Now, I've got a couple of presets in the tone curve area, and it just creates a little bit of an S curve, right? So all I've done is put some points on the curve. I'll show you how to do that if you don't have any presets. If you're, make sure you're using this one, okay? So not this one, because that doesn't give you a point curve. It just allows you to grab points on the graph, okay? So if you want to have more than one point, make sure you're using this one. And then the highlights are on the right-hand side of the graph. You'll see the histogram here as well, okay? So you want to increase the highlights. So I'm going to grab on this side and bring that up. And then I'm going to grab over here, which is the shadows, and bring that down. Okay, so see, it's creating, if I do a more extreme version, what's called an S-curve. Okay, so the steeper the S-curve, the more contrast you have in your image. Okay, if I turn on the clipping warnings, 
looks like I'm getting a tiny bit of clipping, but still not too bad, right? Because I'm not affecting the pure whites and the pure blacks. Okay, so I'm going to scale that back just a little bit. Okay. You can see what that's doing. It's adding a nice contrast. And I'm going to come back here and increase the white balance so it makes it a little bit more, again, more yellow. Because okay? when we have the greens down here, okay, so let's look at as shot, it's a little on the blue side. Okay, So I don't know if you can see this number here. The white balance number for temperature is currently 40, 4450. Okay? Daylight white balance is 5500. So if I type in 5500, we could see the difference, okay? So that's daylight. I can choose a preset because she's chosen to shoot raw. So if I choose daylight, you see that it puts it to 5,500. And now the magenta is also at plus 10. I usually dial this down to about five, right? I also find the color has now gone a little too intense. So I'm going to actually lower the saturation a little bit. Right? It's a dance. Remember, I adjust one thing and then I come back. Okay, now I want to really bring the attention into this center area here. So I'm going to use a mask. Now I'm curious what Lightroom thinks is the subject. So I'm just going to select it and it doesn't know. Okay? So when you have everything in focus in your image, Lightroom has a hard time determining the subject, as you can see here. Okay, so I could do select object and literally just select this tree, but I'm going to use a radial gradient again so that I select sort of a middle size target. I'm going to tilt it. I want to go about like this, make it a little bigger. Where's the points? Make it a little bigger. Okay, now I'm going to invert this because I want to darken the outside part again. So I'm going to invert it. And what I'm doing essentially here is creating a custom vignette. So I'm bringing the highlights down. Okay. I'm also going to bring the clarity down a little bit, the texture down. Okay. And if I bring down dehaze, it tends to sort of, you, you get this blurriness, right? It makes everything sort of mushy. But I found recently, I've been using this more and more. If I bring down dehaze, then when I bring the exposure down, it tends to work better. It just sort of lowers the contrast, okay? I'm also going to bring the blacks down. Okay? I may end up using um, a clone tool to get rid of this stick because it really sort of, it really stands out and it's kind of a problem. But let's just see how that's working, okay? So if I hide this, see before the mask, See how that's really focusing in. Okay, so using the vignette tool is not the only way that you can do a vignette, okay? Okay, now I'm gonna use the clone tool. So Q on the keyboard. And where's my size? Where's my mask? So I'm just going to draw over this stick and I don't wanna get rid of it completely. Right. right now I'm using the um, content aware fill. I'm going to actually switch to the healing tool, which allows me to then choose the area that it's cloning from. Okay, I'm just gonna pick something so it's kind of similar, like this tree over here. Okay. And then I'm gonna dial it down to maybe 50%. Okay. So see how it's darkening the stick? I could actually remove it entirely. That actually looks pretty good. If I go up quite high, it minimizes it. It's still there. You can still see it. I'm at 60% right now. So you can still see it, right? If I turn it off, but it's minimizing it, okay? I could do the same with this one, okay? and it chooses the spot. I just have to reposition. So I'm choosing a dark area and I might just lower that one. So all I'm using is the clone tool, okay? This is the healing part, the healing healing part of the, the clone and, and spot removal tool to darken certain areas. Even this one, I'm not crazy about. So anything that's grabbing my attention away, 
unnecessarily. What happens if I remove this one? I'm going to go back to content aware fill and go 100%. I kind of like removing that one, actually. If you're not happy with it, just press refresh. I'm looking at this area right here. Right? Can you see the difference? Those three sticks alone. Right? The other one that kind of bothers me is this over here. Right? So what I might do, I could either just do the same kind of thing and just paint all the way over it like this. Right? Make sure I get all the white parts. Switch to coloring and healing again. So healing tool. Dial it down. Yeah, and I'm just going to choose a darker area. So I just want darkness. I'm literally cloning darkness. Okay. See that? As I increase it, darkens more. Okay. There we go. Okay. So now we have before and after. Right. Let's look at it upside down because literally, I mean, the image kind of looks the same. You could put it either way, right? Where does your eye go to? Okay. If I turn it off, right? if I turn the masks off, let me go back here. If I turn, oh, not the mask. If I turn the cloning tool off, okay. see where your eye goes? The sticks. Okay. So I'm just using that to bring attention to the palm front, okay, the the fern, the fern. I kind of like it this way, actually. I know you probably shot it this way, but I kind of like it this way. I also like images like this in black and white, okay? So I might play with this one in black and white. But I have some other ideas for it. And I'm not done with Lightroom yet, but we're going to go to Luminar. And I want to play with the luminance a little bit. What I want to do is I bring up the yellow and down with the green, or I'll go the opposite way. Okay, so I'll either darken the yellow and brighten the green. Okay, so you can see which things are green and which things are yellow. Right? There's yellow in both. I'm trying to just get a little bit more contrast, and I think I'll have better luck with the color harmony tool in Luminar to do this, okay? So let's take it to Luminar from here. So, oh, this time I am gonna go to Photoshop, okay? Before I do that though, I wanna make sure I'm in Photoshop, not Photoshop beta, right? Yeah, there we go. So I have to switch this back and forth. Sometimes I like to go to Photoshop beta and sometimes I want not beta because I need to have some other, my settings didn't transfer across to the beta and I don't have my color, my colors, like my um, swatches. Uh, let's see, what am I missing? <laughs> Holly says she sounds corrected. Yes, Canon, Canon files are a little bit more dull. I agree, I think this would be a good print for sure. Well, maybe you can print it and mail it to Holly, Trish. <laughs> we have the same. We have too much art. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. Okay, and where's my tools? Where's my layers? Okay, so there's my layers. And it's a smart object, which is this here, indicated by that here. Okay, this new little bar kind of annoys me. I'll just keep it over there. So from here, I'm going to go to Luminar. Oops, I need to have the layer selected. And I'm going to go from here into Luminar. So this extra step of going to Photoshop first means that you can always come back here and you'll have Luminar as a layer that you can then open and get back to the same settings in Lightroom, in Luminar again, okay, from Lightroom. So you can open it from Lightroom back into Photoshop, back into Neo, and all your edits from Neo will still be there. The other way that I did it means that I don't have that flexibility, okay? If I go to open the other image again and open it in Neo, it will open a new file or it'll open the old file, but I won't have the history 
um, that you'll have over here on the edits. Okay. So let's try color harmony first, right? And that color contrast. So I want to bring it up into this like green yellow area, okay? And I know it's going to give me too much saturation. So let's dial that down. But it's giving us some nice contrast, right? Let's see what that's doing. And we can decide we only want this on this area. So the same area that I did in Lightroom, right? I could say I just want the contrast here. Now it's on the outside, okay? So I need to invert that. So now we got some contrast in the middle. So see how that's punching out that fern again, okay? Now, the idea that I had for this one actually involves um, some of the creative tools. The dramatic tool tends to lower color, but gives you more contrast, okay? So if I bring it up, you see what happens here, okay? Keep the local contrast down a little bit. And it actually, by default, lowers the saturation. You see that? I don't want to brighten it quite so much. And once again, if I want this to apply on the inside only, I could apply that just to this tree. Okay. Maybe not quite so much down. I'm going to do it on the outside again. So I could go back and copy that one and just invert it. So I don't want this one. Okay. So now I've done it on the outside. Okay. So I've put the this effect on the outside. I might change my mind. Maybe it looks better on the on the inside. See how that brightened up the fern again? I like that. So dramatic I had in mind. And once again, I'm going to go to that mood tool and the sepia lot. Okay. It's under creative sepia. The other one that I like a lot is in creative as well. And that one is smoky. It tends to keep a little bit more of the color as you can see. And I kind of like this Ushua one. I don't even know how to pronounce that. But these four, sepia, smoky, Ushua, and wooden, I tend to use these quite a bit um, as a little sort of kicker like this. Now notice if we take it all the way up, it's actually creating sort of this matte look, which is kind of neat, this one. Right? Let's see what wooden does. Okay, wooden is a totally different. Smoky and sepia ends up with a full sepia, okay, if we go all the way. So smoky keeps the blacks black. This one's going sort of a matte color. And likewise with this one, I kind of like wooden actually. So let's dial it down a little bit. Something like that, okay? So it's not fully black and white, but it's really punching up these, these green trees. This thing over here is still bugging me, so I may just end up erasing it. Let's try the erase tool. The erase tool actually does a really good job on stuff like this. Um, you can use Photoshop to do that and use one of the cloning tools, but I find that, that this tool actually works really well. Let me zoom out to about 50% and let me see what it's doing. It's not bad. Um, if I'm if I'm not happy with it, I can just do undo, which is now available in Luminar. And I'm gonna do it bit by bit instead. So I'm just gonna do this part. Now that I'm zoomed in, yeah, that's better. Let's do it part by part. That's also better. And this little claw hand, looks like a claw has to go. There you go. See the difference bit by bit. 
I'm actually going to go across the log this way. See how that sort of works better. You want to make sure you get a nice um, clone so it looks realistic. And I think that does. A little bit of repeating pattern here. So if anything, I might use a clone tool back in Photoshop to solve that. Okay. So, oops. I've got a little bit of clipping here now that I've done the highlights I'm using the dramatic tool. So I'm just going to bring that down a little bit using develop like so. There we go. And we can finish it. Oh, maybe I didn't bring that down enough. There we go. And I can finish it with mystical again. I love mystical on landscape photos like this. I think it's fantastic. Right? Look at the glow you get on these on these ferns. Right? If we want a little more control, we could actually go to glow instead of mystical. And Orton effect is my favorite here. It always brightens the image. So make note that whenever you use Orton effect, you need to bring the brightness down considerably. Okay. And I find like what Orton effect does is it actually blur blurs the black areas as opposed to the bright areas, right? So if we use glow, right, it blurs or softens the tree more so. See that? So the light areas. Whereas Orton effect adds more softness to the dark areas. So you see the dark sort of blurring or bleeding into the light areas, right? Almost to the effect of abstract. Okay, so this is before Luminar and after. I might even add another vignette because we can target with Luminar where we put it, right? So like I had to use a radial filter in Lightroom, I could put it anywhere I want here. I'm going to go way off to the corner here because I want to darken that one a little bit. So I'm just going to put it way off to the corner so that I'm darkening everything this direction down. Let's just see. Move it over. I'm trying to darken this part of the image. So I don't want to darken this top so much. There we go. Okay, there we go. Now, when I apply it, it's going to come back to Photoshop. Okay, so while it's doing that, let me see what you guys have said here. Kelly, that's a great trick. It's a trend of trying to get rid of something. I'm assuming you mean the, the sun rays. Um, or did you use the, do you mean the cloning tool that I used here where I had a lower opacity? The large branch on the right. See, now the branch, the branch still draws my attention. You did shoot horizontal, but you like it the other way. Yeah, I kind of do, right? And she says, the fern looks fabulous. Well, we wanted to bring the fern out. Okay, so now we're back in Photoshop, right? And I've got the layer here, which has Luminar Neo as a smart object. If I want to do some cloning here, okay, without affecting, you can't clone on a smart object, but I don't want to get rid of it being a smart object. So the trick here is to make a new layer with nothing in it and just call it like retouching, right? Leave it blank. <clears throat> Grab your editing tool that you're going to use. So in this case, I'm going to try and use the... 
spot healing tool, actually, um, which is J. So that's this one, okay? Or I could use the stamp tool. Stamp is S, which is this one, okay? And I'm going to use it at a fairly high opacity. And I just want to clone the tree a little bit more that way. Okay, I need to make it bigger. I'm going to start. I'm going to start here. No, nope, other way around. I'm going to start. I need to clone from here over to here. Because I want to just extend. Aha. What happened? I lost my layer. What the heck happened? Okay, I've lost my layer. I've got to find my... Ah, somehow I rasterized the layer. Okay, so I made a mistake. See, my, what I did was somehow I made a layer and then I rasterized it. So that was a mistake. Okay, so I want to have my luminar layer, create a new one, retouching. And now I have my new layer and somewhere along the way, somehow I managed to merge them and get rid of that layer. Okay, so... I'm going to go back to my clone stamp tool. i am still got 75%. I'm going to use normal as a blend mode. I'm going to clone from here. And I'm just going to extend the tree a little bit. So I'm going to start about there. So I just wanted to make it fit in a little bit better. I'm still not happy with that. I might actually start over here. So I'm going to start from here. And I'm going to clone at a lower opacity right in there. So I just want the tree to feel like it's blending into those leaves a little bit better, like so. Okay. Now, if this overall tree is too bright, we can do what's called a dodge and burn layer in Photoshop. Okay, I'll show you how to do that. Create a new layer, and then when it comes up, you want to change the blend mode to overlay, okay? Then check off this box. So we're doing some Photoshop today. For those of you that have Photoshop, check off this box, fill with overlay neutral color, which is 50% gray. And I'm going to call this one Dodge and Burn. Now the trick with the Dodge and Burn layer, you'll notice that it's gray, right? If I turn this off, literally you'll see gray, right? Except where I cloned, right? So the layer is literally gray. But because it's set to overlay, it doesn't actually show unless it's darker or lighter than gray. So the overlay blend mode is looking for things which are not gray. Okay, so we can use that with the brush tool and the color swatches. Okay, so set your color swatches to black and white. So I did that with a D on the keyboard. So it sets them to black as the foreground, white as the background. X switches them, right? So now we're getting into Photoshop keyboard shortcuts if you want to share that, Rob, right? So I'm going to paint with black, okay? So black's going to darken. I have my brush and I'm going to set the opacity to about 12%, right? Okay? So wherever I paint, it's going to burn or darken, okay? So I'm just going to go over this entire log here anything that I want to darken like so and the more I click and paint the more it's darkening it's not giving me the color I want though so I might do this one as a clone see how I can just go over any spot that I don't like and it's darkening right now I can do this part here so this is called a dodge and burn layer and I'm just clicking and painting over all these different spots. To move around, I'm pressing the space bar and then moving it with my mouse while I'm holding the space bar. So I'm, I'm clicking and moving like so. Okay, so any of these parts that I want darker, right, this area here, so I can darken these leaves. Make a really big brush. See that? Okay. Let's do another one. I can darken this whole area. 
I can also, on the same layer, switch my brush to white. So X to switch the colors over here. Now I can lighten. So if there's anything that I want to lighten, let's say, for example, um, I want to highlight this leaf over here. Look it. Now I'm lightening. Okay. If we want to highlight one leaf or the center of these leaves, we can do that to make it look more like a star. Okay. If I want to highlight this leaf or this leaf or this tree. So anything that I paint now, I'm highlighting or lightening. Maybe I want to bring this fern out a little bit too. Okay, so let me just get the layers off here and I'll show you sort of where we've come with this one. Okay, so I'm going to hide that layer. That's the dodge and burn layer. See what it's doing? Okay, so that's called dodge and burning in Photoshop. So now I'm just going to save this and make sure when you do this that you hit save, not save as, and then close, okay? And that will take us back to Lightroom, okay? That's good. It'll pop back in. Now it's a PSD file. So when it comes back into Lightroom, it's a PSD, meaning that I can open it up again in Photoshop, get back to all the edits I did in Photoshop, and get back to the edits that I did in in Luminar as well. All right, so now it's back to Lightroom and there's the new image. Okay, so let's take a look at them. That's the finished version that I brought out of Lightroom and that's what we've got now after Luminar and Photoshop. So let's rotate this one and see what it looks like. This way or this way? Yeah, I kind of like it vertical. I don't know. I just like it that way. What do you guys think? This way? This way feels more normal. Play around with the cropping, Trish. I think you could play with it either way. But I definitely like what's happening. If you want to see them side by side, okay, you can do a comparison view. Okay, So if we do them side by side using C, Okay, so that's comparison mode, or you could use N, but the difference with comparison mode, right, if I do N, it still shows them side by side, but I can't zoom in on these, right? If I use C and I zoom on one, it zooms and moves them both at the same time, okay? So thoughts on that. What do we think about the jungle? Smash that thumbs up button, he said. Well, we ate hamburgers yesterday called Smash Burger. <laughs> so there you go. Maybe he's got smashing um, in mind. Thanks for coming, Kelly. Okay. Uh, I think we have time for some more. Uh, now, again, I've done Lightroom and Luminar, so there's lots of great examples. Brandon, are you still here? Because I've got some cool images that Brandon sent. Um, this one here, I think, Holly, are you still here, Holly? Stephanie's still here. You're welcome, Trish. I think it looks great, too. It's a great image. Okay, so this one was really cool that Brandon sent, and we could focus in on this, and I had the idea of a sun rays on this one also. Okay, so this is one he wanted done in Luminar, and Holly sent this really neat image. Um, you found some really cool things in the forest, Holly. I, I wouldn't even begin to know what that is. It looks like they're making some sort of a, a mat or a rug or something. It's like some sort of weaving, right? And this interesting sculptures, right? So we've got um, Brandon's and Holly's. And is Marty still here? We've got this one, which I thought would make a really nice, nice black and white, okay? So um, let's hop over to Luminar and just do a direct Luminar edit. I'm gonna close Photoshop and let's see. Okay, so let's let's work on Holly's first and then let's do Brandon's, okay? So we haven't done a full Luminar edit yet today. So let's start right from Develop Raw, okay? This is the only place that you can choose the camera profiles if Luminar recognizes your profiles, which it does not for Fuji, so unfortunately. So with Holly's, we can choose landscape and immediately get some more color. So that's great. I'm going to start there. 
look at the histogram, right? I can turn on the clipping warnings and we can see that there is some, some clippings in the sky. But again, the same thing applies. If I drag it all the way down, I can get rid of most of the clipping, right? But it also lowers the highlights on everything else in the image. So it, as a matter of fact, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm gonna let it go light, okay? I'm gonna let it get brighter and I'm not gonna worry about the highlights back here so much, okay? I'm gonna look at the blacks and the whites and we need to have the clipping on here because we don't have the option of holding the alt option key here in luminar so if you want to see if you're getting any black clipping right if i drag it down you could see the blacks indicated with a blue marker so that's clipping and you could see the highlights clipping so i'm going to bring it down a little bit and we're going to go somewhere like that brighten the shadows a little bit you can see what that's doing the other tool that's going to work really great on this is Enhance AI, but I want to do all the raw stuff before we leave here. So I want to make sure we've dealt with any chromatic aberration, right? Do we have any chromatic aberration? If you have any, you're going to see it along the edges of things. It might also look like a fringe, right? So I'm using the defringe. Let me look at the edge here. Okay, so I think I'll leave them both on. Noise reduction, I don't see any noise, so I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm gonna bring the sharpness up a little bit here. And color, how do we feel about the color? Okay, so again, it's as shot, and you've got the same presets that we had in Lightroom. So this is the only place inside Luminar that you will find the white balance sliders, okay? You will find the, the white balance presets, under develop raw, if you shot raw, and you'll find the temperature and the tilt, temperature and tint sliders here, okay? So I'm gonna go with daylight, and see how that warmed it up. And if we go cloudy, it's even warmer. So now it's pretty yellow. Uh, it's a little over the top yellow. And I'm gonna give it a little bit of magenta just to balance out some of that green tint. But so far, we're picking up a lot more color, okay? I'm going to go not quite so far on the blacks, like so. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to go to Enhance AI and just see what it comes up with. Okay, so it adds contrast and color and saturation. Not necessarily what I want. Okay, so I'm not going to be too worried about leaving that one. Sky Enhancer, it, looks, it does pick up some of that highlight in the sky, so I might bring that one up a little bit. But the focus really is on this interesting sort of um, gate, right? So we definitely want a vignette here. So I'm just going to darken the edges. Maybe in a little tighter. Okay, see that? It's coming in a little too close on there. And then let's talk about the cropping. So the gate is right in the middle. Right? How does everybody feel about the cropping? Should we crop this one? Do we like this tree on the right? Do we want to get rid of it? Right? Do we want the gate more off-center? There's an interesting thing happening here because the, it, the center, center composition is screaming for balance. It wants to have equal things. And there's a big tree on the right and a kind of a big tree on the left. So it's kind of balanced, even though they're different kinds of trees, it's kind of balanced. So I don't mind it being centered in this case, okay? But let's see what Luminar thinks is a good composition. I'm just gonna let Composition AI take over and it wants to come in tighter. What if we do that? What if we come in just to this little gate here? I think it's maybe a little too tight and have it a bit off center. Let's see how that looks. I don't mind that either. Okay, so now we've gotten rid of the big tree on the right. The most interesting thing in this scene is now this archway, right? I really wish that there was something in the archway for us to go to as, as an interesting point. Um, you know, somebody may be walking down this path over here in the middle, a dog, 
uh, person with a dog because right now we go in and we go straight to this tree here. So if this is something that's near you, Holly, this is definitely worth exploring. Try going back at different times of day and see how the light changes. Try photographing it from both sides of this archway and try getting somebody in, in the archway here as, as a subject, right? Take somebody if you have to, right? So um, I would start playing, playing with that a little bit. And then all of the other stuff that we applied earlier would work well on here too, right? The advantage of the color tool in Luminar over the HSL tool in Lightroom is that we can mask it, okay? So if I want to darken the yellows, oops, I'm on the wrong thing, I'm on hue, let me get to luminance. So if we wanna darken the yellows, we can deal with some of those problems, okay? Brighten the green, Eh, I'm not so crazy about it. We can definitely deal with some of the things in the background, right? But I would probably go in and paint it in just to that area. So we've gone a little bit too orange. So let's use masking and the brush. And I'm just going to paint it into these bright areas here. So I'm just going to go in here and avoid the actual arch itself. Like so, something like that. Okay, so that's taking care of that background a little bit. We could try color harmony and see if we can pick up more from the arch this way. Grab that hue slider. Again, it's affecting the background more so. So look what's happening. See, I can really affect that background if I want to. Okay, so if you want to darken the background more, okay, look what it's doing here. And all I have to do is mask out the archway then. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to leave it about there. And I'm going to use the brush, but I'm going to erase from this part. Okay, so I'm just going to go around the outside. And if I don't want to darken here, same thing. Around one more time. So I found a couple of tools to do a nice job darkening the background. Definitely this one is going to benefit from Mystical. Oh, I love me some Mystical, like so. And we could play with those same LUTs again. So are you seeing a trend here? I'm using the same tools again on different forest images, right? So they've all got a similar look and I'm using the similar tools again. Notice I didn't use landscape on this one either because the colors are already intense. And if I add the golden glow and the foliage enhancer, it's just going to make it over the top. However, having said that, we could apply it just to the arch again. Okay, so let's do foliage enhancer and golden hour. Change the color as usual. And then mask it to paint in once again just on the arch i'm calling it an arch for lack of a better term okay so now we've just punched that up a little bit like so so this one doesn't need a whole lot of editing um, if anything, I might do some minus structure on this one and again, apply it to the background. So I'm going to go and copy the mask that I just did on this one here. I'm going to copy the mask here and then I'm going to go to structure, go minus, and I'm going to go all the way just so you can see what it's doing. And then I'm going to paste that mask and invert it. So paste and invert. Okay, so that's obviously too far and I need to tone it down. I'm going to erase a bit more. 
Okay, so I want to make sure I don't get this at all. Okay, I would do a way better job of erasing. Okay, I'm making sure to get the ground that it's on. Okay, the ground would not be blurry right next to it. Like so. Neither would this tree over here. Now I'm going to drag, drag that back to something a little more realistic. So I'm just trying to do a background blur. I wish we could do background bokeh on subjects other than portraits because it works really, really well. So there's our before and after. Now let's just see what happens. Now keep in mind that I've done a lot of masking there. So if you copy and paste that to another image, you're going to get the masks coming forward as well. So it's not going to work so well. But let's give a go to Brandon's image, and we'll say this is the last one of the night. So once again, oops, uh, we're going to start with noiseless. We're going to start with develop raw, camera profile, and I'm trying to remember... Well, I don't need to remember what they are. I just have to scroll over them. That one kind of does a nice job. I want more color. And hmm, camera standard gives us more color. But let's see that other one. That's vivid. That's a nice job, actually. Definitely not black and white. This one gives us more tones. But I like what's happening with standard. So I think I'm going to go with standard and stick there. Okay. Now we're going to look at the histogram again. We've got some stuff clipping in the background. Again, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm focused on this part of the image here. Okay? If anything, I might actually increase the whites because see what happens here. Okay? So I don't want anything clipping on the log. So I'm paying attention to the bottom half of the image only. There's a little bit of blacks clipping. I'm going to brighten it a little bit. And do the same thing with the fringe. Okay, that looks pretty good. Maybe the highlights down a little bit. Make sure we have detail on that log. Okay, and it did correct the background a little bit as well. That's getting close. Uh, color, white balance. Do we need to adjust the color at all? Again, I'm going to go to daylight. Okay? See how much warmer that immediately all the green punched out. Look at that. Okay, So that's how it was shot. Again, the white balance is 4,800. We can drag that closer to 5,500, or we can choose daylight. Right? If anything, it's a little bit green and a little bit oversaturated so i'm just going to bring it down a tiny bit okay tiny bit so so far before and after big difference right okay so now i want to do um the sun rays because i really had the idea here of the light coming through here and hitting this tree okay so where i place it is going to be crucial I think it should be coming from somewhere over here because my idea is I'd like it to come from here like it's hitting this log, okay? So maybe even coming from behind one of these trees. And you see how smart it is that when you put it behind something, it's like the sun is hidden, but if you put it there, you get the whole effect, right? I like the idea of it coming out from something. Let's try there. Okay, so I'm going to place it there. I almost always warm it up. I like warm. Okay. And let's go random. Definitely want overall look darker. So overall look to the left is darker, to the right is brighter. And I definitely like the overall look. Okay. Look at this little neat little, see the more I, I increase it, the penetration, right? We get this cool little glow from around there. It's like it's creating a sunburst, right? Like you would get in your camera. Because if the sun was actually peeking out from behind the tree, 
you can create that sunburst with a small aperture. Okay, so I'm just going to play with the randomizer. I want it to hit that tree. Oh, that looks good. See that? See, there's a beam of light coming there. Let's go even darker. See that? So if you're not sure what it's doing, do this. Take your amount up and your look down and you'll be able to see what it's doing. Okay. I really like that. Look at that. I'm just playing with the intensity and the amount here. I can also play with the positioning, but I don't want to lose it. I don't want to lose that effect. See how it changes when you go behind the tree? Same happens as when you're shooting. Okay. Oh, I like that. Look at the look at that the split beams there. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I like that. See that? Okay, so let me just dial the amount down a little bit. Like so. And I still haven't added a vignette. We can do that. Uh, oh, I'm going to, before I do that, I'm going to go with the details panel. And I want to bring some more crunchiness into the log itself. So I'm going to bring up medium details. Let's zoom in a little bit here and a little bit of small details and a little bit of sharpen. And I only want this on this bottom half, so I'm gonna mask it using a linear gradient. Okay, so I only want it there. Okay. And then I'm going to do similar with structure. Uh, we also could try enhance AI on this one. Okay, so see what that does? Eh. I don't know. I find that one's hit and miss, but we could definitely increase the structure. And then same thing, mask it using a linear gradient. Just like that. So I just want the log. As a matter of fact, I don't want the front of the log. So I don't want this part too sharp. Okay, so I'm going to erase from the foreground a little bit. Okay, so if I'm looking at the foreground, there's before, after. Oh, I'm going to erase. I'm going to go erase from over here, too. I don't want to add structure to this part. I only want it on the log. See that? One more thing I'm going to do with color is I want to minimize the color of the green in the background. Okay, so I'm going to bring the saturation down, specifically actually on green. So let's do saturation of green and yellow. And I can shift the hue a bit more as well if I want, a bit more yellow. And then just mask it the opposite way. So now I'm going to do linear gradient this way. Okay. So see if that's lowering the color and the contrast on the top part. Okay. See that? So before and after. I'm still not totally happy with the position of the sun rays. I would probably play with it a bit more. That's kind of cool too. Okay. Something like that. It's not bad. Okay. Do you have the idea of what I'm trying to do so that the log is sun kissed? Okay. Questions? Brandon, you like what I did? Yeah, that's a really cool, um, really cool log. Is that somewhere near Calgary or did you go to BC? It looks more like a BC forest kind of picture. <laughs> Take care, Trish. Thanks for playing hooky from work to, to join in. 
And Holly said, it's the woods near the campus in Virginia. I walked there to kill time, but I agree it would be fun with a person in it. Yeah, if you can go back, absolutely. <laughs> you could add a bear. Well, we could do that in the new Photoshop, but um, the bears are not so great anymore. The bear, the bears are when you try to add an actual, the, the generated stuff, if you try to create a person or an animal, the, they're not so great. Um, okay. Any other questions? So what's everybody think? Impressive, he says. You like this one, David. Alaska. Awesome. Oh, you're up in uh, Deb's neighborhood now. Maybe you should connect and go in, and shoot. <laughs> you like this one. So it's about you know, transforming an image from, uh, as soon as I saw this one and the light was in the background, I knew I wanted to add sun rays as soon as I saw it. Um, that was the first thing that came to my mind. So rather than trying to tone down all those highlights, just like I did on the other one, um, of Danelle's with the bridge, I used it. Right. So it's about creating a feeling or a mood uh, as well as toning things down. So all of that stuff is the technical, right? But I'm trying to create a feeling or a mood. Does it, does it feel like you're in the forest with this image? Yes, absolutely. Right. Thanks, Marguerite. I'm so glad that makes me feel good. So just to remind you, I'm going to come back over here to Lightroom. So, um, next week, as we finish up today, I'm glad everybody learned a ton. I hope you got lots of things um, to take away and use in your editing of your forest. And we have enough to do another one. So don't send me any more forest images. We still have lots. Um, and I took so much time on these ones because you had such great images that you all sent. So I'm glad you enjoyed it. So next week we're going to be doing, did we say? <laughs> I've forgotten now. What did we say we were going to do? Uh, water. So I want to see images of water. So it could be raining. Uh, it could be a fountain. It could be the kids running through the sprinkler. Uh, a water pistol fight, <laughs> whatever you want to do, uh, or it could be um, something in nature, a lake, the ocean, but I want to see some water. So I've got a few images that I can use that are already been submitted, but send me some water. And then the week after that, we're going to be doing abstract. So go and shoot some abstracts. I would like to see how creative you all are in creating some abstracts, whether that be using in-camera movement, uh, zooming during the exposure, or just photographing it in a way that makes the person that's looking at it go, what the heck is that? If it makes us go like this, when we're looking at it, it's probably an abstract, okay? So think of those two topics, send us your images using this link. Thanks again for joining in everybody. It's been fantastic. Um, next week, we're going to have to keep the, the session a little bit shorter because I have a photo shoot next week right afterwards um, that should be really interesting with a professional wrestler. So I will share those images with you when I have them. Take care everyone and we'll see you next week for water. <laughs>